When we started out, we were not only talking to people to help create behavior change, but we were also talking to them about how we form and create and support good policy. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, some of the policy wasn't great. It had loopholes in it that industry utilized to just make thicker plastic bags. When we ban plastic bags, which is a total joke, uses more resources, more materials, and they put happy faces on it and say, this bag is reusable. Yo, 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 yo! Welcome, welcome, welcome welcome back to season two. Oh, it's been a long summer. So much to report, but welcome to Slap the Power. I am Rick Barrio Dill. I am Maya Sykes, and in the immortal words of Timbaland, it's been a long time. We shouldn't have left you without, without a, a dope, dope beat to step, step to. to. So how are you? Yes. How was your summer? That's Mine right. was good. That's it was a little weird. Yes, yes. How was yours? Oh, long, long. Two months on the road. Uh, lots to talk about. Lots to go through. And uh, on the show today, we're going to be... Touching on something that we've been wanting to touch on for a while, and uh, if Fran Drescher has her way, Hollywood is going to be quitting the new tobacco, and that is single-use plastics. And uh, so we're going to be talking about that. We're going to basically be hearing about Maya's uh, packing and her getting ready for her upcoming tour with uh, Billy Idol. Rebel yeah. Rebel yell, baby. We will also learn if Rick Barrio Dill is indeed a good son. That's right. That's right. You'll find out. Stick around and find out. Uh, and at the end, we have a brand new segment we're calling Tour Stories. <laughs> <laughs> they are basically tour horror stories. Uh, the kind that you didn't think you were going to make it out alive kind of tour horror stories. And as touring musicians, we have quite a few of them. So this is a segment that could literally literally go on into infinity. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, you collect all of them and you can write a book. So uh, we're looking forward to doing that. And a little bit later, uh, we had the pleasure of interviewing from the Plastic Pollution Coalition, uh, Deanna Cohen and Amelia Hansen. And they were just... Uh, just a joy to have in studio and enlightened me to so many things. Like, my world is totally changed after that interview, so make sure to stick around. I didn't know that there is a BPA and then a different kind of BP that you have to watch the interview to see because I don't want to give it away. (laughs) But anyway... When something says it's BPA free, it could have another kind of BPA that is just as bad. So there are all these ways that these industries are trying to trick you into using single plastics. And the other thing she pointed out, like, just think about this. Just let this just sink into your mind hole right quick. Think about how many times you watch television and there's somebody taking a swig out of just a water bottle, like in a gym scene or in a club scene. Okay, if those scenes get done maybe 13 or 14 times. So every time if it's a full bottle, they are opening... Mm. Yeah. A full bottle. Do you know how many bottles they must be using in these takes? It must be thousands, like just per episode. It's and that was just mind blowing. I didn't yeah. even think about that. Yeah, it, it, it's it was really really enlightening, and uh, I'm my world is is rock. So make sure to stick around for that. Uh, but first, let's get to the show. You know, Hollywood is. I think it's always kind of been something where Hollywood can sort of set the tone in the zeitgeist uh, for TV shows. The number of single use plastic items shown per episode was 28 on average and an analysis i know right an analysis of the films from 2019 to 2020 season found that single use plastics were used at least once in most hollywood films and over 90 percent of single use plastic items shown in films were not disposed of and they contribute to the false narrative of magically disappearing trash uh when disposal was shown on the screen 80 percent of the items were littered so nobody talks about these things and i remember when they had cigarettes and ashtrays on planes right and we're like now we look back on that and we're like this is this is just really really stupid right and i think one day we're going to look back especially after what we our interviews and everything we learned today we're going to look back and we're going to see single-use plastics is kind of it's the next thing we just need to totally totally clear out of our lives and it's interesting because we make the comparison of it to the cigarette and it's true you used to have cigarettes in everything you know people just smoke whatever no 
Okay, is it is it not me? Is it just me, rather? <laughs> Do you not feel like very, like very, very disturbed when you go on a plane, like in the today times, and you see in the bathroom they still have like the, the ashtray? ashtray. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. I'll be like, oh my god, we gonna yes. die. No, this no, plane no, is like thirty five years. Thirty five is like eighty. No, it's like, it's like yeah, no, no, no. That's some scary shit. You realize just how dumb it is, and uh, I think one day we're gonna look back at uh, the internet to some degree and be like. How did we let? How did we let pregnant women use the like, internet? What? How did we? Yeah. How do we look at it? But you know, it's kind of also one of those things. It's like it's sort of easy. It's like why should we care? There's a ton of reasons we go into on the show today on why why we should we should care. But it um, it's it's also one of those things where we divide things on slap the power down. It everything comes into one of three cul de sacs, right? It's the it's either an issue to deal with our democracy, it's an issue to deal with rights and human rights, or it's an issue that deals with climate. And plastic is, it is all three. It's way well, it's kind of it is all. No, three. it is all. It three. is all three, and it's it is a climate issue way more than I knew or thought because plastic is part of the fossil fuel industry, and it's and as as we learned, it's it's the fossil fuel industry's plan B. So it's sort of like now it makes sense why they push, you know, they're just, they're such hard on the plastic lobby on, on trying to keep it in play because this, they realize that, you know, uh, internal combustion engine engines are going out of, uh, are going out and, you know, they can't pull all this oil out of the ground or we're all really, 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 really going to die. So we'll just shift to plastics and it's like plastics are going to kill us too. So, yeah, yeah. What a, you know, there are a lot of reasons why we should care about this, including, you know, like I said, none the least of it being the climate issue. So, I do want to lighten it up real quick. You are, you're getting ready to go on tour, aren't you? Yes, I am. I am performing for this little known artist named Billy Idol. Never heard of him. Yeah, never heard of him. No. Uh, no, seriously. He's really, really awesome. And he, he is, uh, awesome. Super awesome. is not just a person who I feel like has stood the test of time musically. His musical director, Steve Stevens, is like one of the best guitar players in yeah, the universe. Ch- church. And just church. really cool. Church, uh, you pay no mind to that. Skating, <laughs> ting, ting, pay no ting, mind ting. to that. I always wanted to invent one of them theme songs. Like I've always yeah. wanted to think, like if I invented a less obnoxious ringtone or alarm, because all of them, I hate all of them. I can't stand any we, single ringtone of any single kind. It's so funny you say that. In our house, we have re done all of the apple melodies and songs but to charlie our, our dog so it's our it's charlie <laughs> it'd be like charlie is the bestest doggy like we just redo them to that to make them more pleasurable because let's be honest he really is the best dog <laughs> I mean, puppy it's, dog. yeah he re- i mean he's got the instagram page to uh, prove it shout out to uh, charlie is the best dog on that instagram is hilarious yeah so i haven't started an instagram for uh, stanley for Stanley, yeah, Sir Stanley the Wheaton. <laughs> I, I, I'm loving the pictures, and I am loving the the uh, the content, quote unquote. You're putting out on Stanley. You, well, yeah, bless his little heart. Bless his um, little heart. Bless his little heart. I tried to put a raincoat on him, and uh, it did not go well. Bless his little spirit. Um, <laughs> and I'm sorry, like I'm yeah. sorry, Stanley, because he looked at me like, um, ma'am, I can't see. Yeah, oh, Stanley, got got to love him. Are you excited about going on tour? Yeah, I mean, it's been. A while since I've been on a tour tour yeah. because of COVID. And I had to remind myself how I tour because I've been a touring musician for, I don't know, almost 20 years. Yeah. So I had to adopt my old habits. Like, okay, I pack like a serial killer. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I have compression bags that have labels on everything. So it, literally, if you go in my bag, everything is in compression cubes that line up and stack up a certain way. And Mine's they all like, have names. Mine's like that too. And I'm just like, <laughs> listen, I am, she is I and I am her. Hey. And um, because hey. of my Amazon hookup thing I was able to get all of these like color coordinated yeah. um, compression bags so now I can be like show clothes are in purple but everyday clothes are in black so I just look I mean it looks hilarious I look like the home edit but like in my suitcase and everything <laughs> is just neatly lined up but I mean it is what it is and I always put an air tag I just hide it there's a little hide compartment in oh, my right, suitcase right, right. so that way I can track it so if they're ever like we lost your suitcase I can say well Apple say it's uh, the Minneapolis 
Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, <laughs> um, and I've just learned to pack that way and travel that way because you're on the go and you need to find things so quickly. Oh so. my God! Yeah, I well, one of the things that I learned early on for those of you that aren't uh, touring musicians, <laughs> um, the getting in and out of a bus very quickly mm -hmm. like moving in and moving out sometimes especially in Europe and in other places in the northeast and stuff like that the buses don't have space so what happens is the bus pulls up basically turns on his hazards like he's your like he's your uh, uh, you know uh, what do you call it Uber Eats driver or something like that where and and so you have arguably 60 seconds to get either on or off the bus with everything you own. And uh, so I've, I've learned or early. Or everything you need for that day. On and the you're bus. not going to see the bus again for like 12 hours. Or cause days. Because it's, it's going to have to go to like a bus depot yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like in Paris, like it's got to park, you know, 20 minutes away and stuff like that. So and what I've learned was I put the I put the fluorescent green names on all the bags. So my sort of uh, uh, seeing challenged self can, can get at those. The other thing is each of the bags inside the bag have a handle so technically i can open up my bag grab all of the bags at once and i can be on a bus and moved in for two months of a tour in about 40 40 seconds 30 to 40 seconds so you know the things you you got to figure out when you're in a hustle hard boulevard you know also too i'm uh not 20 anymore so i require machinery to survive i need the right <laughs> pillow hey. i need yeah. Um, to have a massage gun with me like she has she requires maintenance it just is what it is like I am at that age where I need to wear the right socks or else my plantar fasciitis is gonna act up oh my god and it is what it is it's so funny I have I had plantar fasciitis too like I, I, this is why I wear these special socks tour. when I go to sleep from tour because so, tour will give you plantar fasciitis yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I had no idea stages what that was. have nothing like they're not there's no give to them yeah. and you're walking on like these like weird cobble streets in the wrong shoes or you know you're surprised in the middle of the night and you have to like hike someplace you didn't know about yes so I wear these special socks that help my plantar fasciitis <laughs> at the night night time I also need an eye mask because hey. any crack of daylight will yeah. keep me awake yeah. listen she requires maintenance is all I'm saying hey. so I have to have my special eye pillow all my right. special pillow that I sleep with listen the wrong pillow pillow can mess up your entire day it really really can especially in a small bunk so i have learned to bring this little special memory travel pillow with me yeah 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 because i need to go to sleep <laughs> i heard that i did not wake up like this i heard that so for those of you that uh, because this is uh, an audio medium you're not going to be able to see it but we uh we have changed over inside the studio here where we're, we're getting rid of all of our plastic so that was we're super stoked about that and um we're learning about about things you know the, and, and for me tour this summer I saw so much single-use plastic cup waste that I, I I knew loosely in the back of my head that we had this episode planned but I didn't know how bad I was gonna be uh, of violating the the, the, the pr principal tenet of just not being a bad steward of this earth it, there was so much waste not even on our bus, but also just w a lot of the festivals. There was just so much waste. And uh, so I, I'm really glad that we are um, doing this episode. And, and hopefully what's, you'll find a bunch of ways that you can make small changes to your life. Small, simple, easy changes. I've already got my dad on a couple of these that we learned from our, from our interview. And, you know, he's 75 years old. You know, old dogs sometimes don't like new tricks, right? You know, but uh, my dad's already changing on it. So uh, you can too. And um, I think we're going to be sort of really glad to bring that to you today. And we want to hear from you. When you hear and look at this episode, if you're watching it on YouTube, YouTube, or if you're listening to it on any of the platforms that uh, we're currently uh, available on, let us know uh, some of the more effective ways you've had in changing over your life from single-use plastics, because I do believe mm. this is something that is going to take everyone's effort. And one of the things I loved about this episode so much is, if you're a touring musician, you can definitely see this as being an insurmountable problem, and you yeah. can definitely be overwhelmed yeah. by the amount of waste. But as both of our guests pointed out, there are some simple fixes that 
if invested in properly, save money, yeah. uh, save the environment, save you. So if you have some that we don't mention in this episode, please reach out to us and let us know because we'd love to highlight any positive solution. We're here to make positive solutions That's more available Amen. to everyone, and that includes us. So yeah. please reach out if you've got an idea we didn't mention. That's right. We would love to hear from you. Amen. Amen. Slapthepower.com. Uh, you know, make sure to leave us comments anywhere you get your stuff. And uh, yeah, w- when we come back, our interview with uh, Deanna Cohen and Amelia Hansen from the Plastics Pollution Coalition. PPLs. All right, it's not just all doom and gloom. There is some great news and some progress going on. Uh, the Plastic Pollution Coalition has launched Flip the Script on Plastics, an initiative that is working with actors, writers, and showrunners, and more in the entertainment industry to help film and TV eliminate sim- single-use plastics on screen and add accurate information about the plastic pollution crisis into storylines. Uh, sag After has established a Green Council to promote a self-regulation industry-wide ban on single-use plastics on screen. And we're actually seeing some positive change. The film Marry Me, which we found out, uh, starring Jennifer Lopez, showcased reusable items. Ted Lasso uh, only per- portrays reusable items, too. And New Girl often speak up, speaks up against society's throwaway culture. So the beautiful thing is, joining us today in the studio for the interview, we are honored to have, from Plastic Pollution Coalition, Deanna Cohen, the CEO and co-founder of PPC, as well as Amelia Hansen, the project coordinator from Flip the Script on Plastics. Ladies, welcome to the show. Hi, Thank welcome. You. Hi, yeah. thanks for having us. Thank you guys for coming on down. Uh, I know this is something that is, that is as we just got back from tour, uh, two months on tour, this is something that's very near and dear to my heart because it was punishing how much plastic is wasted mm-hmm. in music festivals, on music tours. Uh, you know, Europe is doing something that is, uh, parts of Europe are doing something that's great where they're starting to change and make, and make things where you have to bring your own bottle and stuff like that. But it is rare. It is rare. And the amount of plastic that even on our bus that's stacked up, I was like, I have to have Diane and Amelia in because I, I need somebody to punch me in the face on reality and help me in a tectonic way. Uh, just figure out how, how, can I cha- how can we change these practices at a much more of a macro level. And for our listeners that might not be in the know about what you do, can you just share with us your mission statement and how uh, Plastic Pollution Coalition came to be? Sure. So um, just for background, I'm Deanna Cohen and visual artist. I grew up here in Los Angeles. And for the last 30 plus years, I've been making artwork out of plastic bags that I cut up and sew back together. So I'm making two and three dimensional pieces and showing those. And in doing that, and becoming a certified diver when I was 25, starting to longboard and surf when I was 30, I kept seeing more and more plastic in the ocean. Yeah. And I heard this kind of, it seemed like a lone voice at the time of Captain Charlie Moore, who founded Algalita, saying, we have a big problem. We literally have a great Pacific garbage patch forming yeah. in the Pacific Ocean. And so originally, I had this idea to go out and clean it all up and realize that was a Sisyphusian task and a fool's <laughs> errand. So I backed up. And in doing that, I, I, along the way, I met other people who were all looking at the issue of plastic and plastic pollution. And we decided to create a, an organization together that would be an alliance. So we co-founded Plastic Pollution Coalition in 2009. We're a communication and advocacy organization working towards a more just, equitable, regenerative world free of plastic pollution and its toxic impacts. Hey. Mm. And that, and that, you know, our mission has evolved over the years, but we, we understand now that where our sweet spot really lies is in uh, communications and advocacy for this issue. And, um, and so there you go. That's, that's how we began. And I think our first year, 2009, we were, we had our soft launch was hosted by Le- Leonardo DiCaprio's mom, Irma Lynn DiCaprio. Ne- never heard of him. No, and no. She, well, she's, ama- she's amazing and was really deeply concerned about plastic pollution sure. and how much she was encountering on the beach every day. She lived in Malibu at the time, and she would walk her dog and collect huge garbage cans full of plastic and didn't know really what to do with it. So yeah. we had our soft launch with her on the same day that Bill McKibbins mm. announced 350.org. And 40 of us took a sign, uh, uh, took a photograph together with a sign that said 350.org instead of Plastic Pollution <laughs> Coalition. Uh, yeah. But so now we're about to, we're, we're beginning to enter this fall our 15th year mm-hmm. 
oh, of wow. Plastic Pollution Coalition, and we've grown from our first year about 10 members, our second year about 25 members, maybe two of whom were businesses. Uh, now we're just over 1,400 members, and wow. we're about right. half and half organizations and businesses based in 75 different countries yes. around the planet. That's amazing. So, Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Now, is for the businesses, I have so many questions, but for the, for the, for the businesses, is it that they just, pl that it's the pledge and then the, that they just figure out a way to, to filter that down into their operations? I mean, we vet the businesses that join us. Sure. Um, and what we've seen is just the businesses, the amount of businesses that have joined us has really had a huge uptick just in the last five years. And what we're seeing is a lot of um, companies and businesses and kind of infrastructure systems that are supporting reusable, yeah. refillable, yeah. making things out of food grade steel, glass, copper, wood, plant based. Um, and I'm not talking about bioplastics when I say that. I'm talking about algae, seaweed, mm -hmm. mushrooms, mushroom mycelium, mm. chitin, which is made from the shells of sea, like a uh, shrimp yeah, and, yeah. and seafood. Um, <clears throat> So it's it's been really just it's been really interesting to see and it is it is a pledge that people make when mm -hmm. they and companies make when they join our coalition but we also take a look at what they're doing because sure. th because as we've grown and as we've learned more about the issue and as we've h helped communicate that this isn't we're not talking about litter rubbish waste garbage you know we're talking about or marine debris. We're talking about plastic, and we're yeah. talking about plastic pollution. As we've communicated that, and that language has been embraced and utilized by our coalition members and our coalition member uh, businesses. What we're seeing is that people are really taking it on, and they're taking it on internally at mm. their own company, looking at ways to reduce it yeah. in their uh, practice internally, if they have a kitchen, if they serve food, um, if they are providing a service that is packaging something, packaging yeah. a product that they're yeah. selling, really revisiting that and looking for ways to do it that are hopefully more sustainable or, again, utilizing materials that are reusable or refillable. And I think an important key to that, too, is that it be non-toxic. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for things that are non-toxic and bio-benign. Yeah. And penultimate or ultimate would be glass. Now, I have a question. It just seems like you kind of hit the nail on the head by talking about in parts of Europe, yeah. they're doing replacing, but but only in parts. Only in parts. And I noticed that uh, I did a festival in Brisbane, and the festival in Brisbane had a statewide policy of refillable everything. So when you came to, even as a participant, you were issued a badge and a water bottle, and if you were caught using a plastic thing, you were fined. And they'd give you another water bottle for free. All you had to do was say, I need another water bottle. But if they caught you using plastics, you were fined. So my point is, it seems like the biggest change to have this, the way to have this happen is to do it through a legislative initiative that has stringent effects Teeth. to it. Yeah. yeah. So how do we put that in place and how do we get people to understand that that's the necessary push? Yeah. So, I mean, we, when we started out, we were not only talking to people to help create behavior change, but we were also talking to them about how we form and create and support good policy. Mm -hmm. So in the beginning, some of the policy wasn't great. It had loopholes in it that industry utilized to just make thicker plastic bags. Right. When we ban plastic bags, which is a total joke. Yeah. Uses more resources, more materials, and they put happy faces on it and say this bag is reusable and stuff like that. I mean, that that was a loophole and that was an error at least with the policy for California. And that's something that we're trying to manage now. We're trying to change. Um, but what we're seeing is that statewide and citywide, there are lots of policies that have gone into place. Here in California. Not, not just in California, across the United States. Mm -hmm. And right. there are also two pieces of federal policy that we've been uh, supporting and advocating for, as well as uh, international policy. So there's a global plastic treaty that is being refined and, and written and negotiated uh, currently that we are part of as well. Interesting. And, and what's been really fascinating about this is, so we're going into our 15th year. It took about eight years to get people to start calling it plastic and plastic pollution. So mm. again, 
beginning to move away from what industry still likes to use. They like to use the word waste. Okay. Ah, yeah. Interesting. Because it's so and can vague. You di- can you differentiate the the two between the two so that our listeners know what to look for? Because well, I feel like that's a huge yeah. yeah well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like Coca Cola has a campaign called "A World Without Waste." Um, you know, Dow and Dupont and these big chemical companies and and industry have created something called the Alliance to End Plastic Waste. I think if you see the word waste, litter, rubbish garbage or marine debris it's bullshit it no it should just it should just be a red flag for you uh, yeah. okay and you want to look for where people are actually identifying it like when, when we look at marine debris and what is collected in the ocean 70 to 90 percent of it plastic. is plastic, plastic. Yeah. so if we're looking wow. at it and it's plastic and it's in the environment whether it's in the ocean or on land or microplastics in our body it's plastic pollution yeah we are being polluted yeah. by plastic and sorry i have to say just two other things about please, it that I, I hope will be useful to your listeners plastic is made from petrochemicals and oil right 99 percent of plastics are made from petrochemicals and oil and coal and fracked and cracked gas that industry plastic is their plan b uh, okay yeah sure so First, know that. Take your electric cars. We, we've got this as a backup. Right. Yeah, yeah. And second, plastic was never designed to be recycled. Right. Plastic is still not designed to be recycled. Yeah. So yeah. I call it wish cycling, and I still put any plastic that comes into my family, my life, in I'm lucky enough to have different recycling bins. Sure. Um, you know, here in Los Angeles. Yeah. But I don't know what happens to that. I think most of it is either landfilled or it's burnt in some way. Mm. And oftentimes when it's burnt, they call it waste to energy, waste to fuel, or incineration. But it'll have a lot of nice kind of good sounding names that sound like a good idea. Yeah, we turned it back into fuel so we could burn it again. Yeah. You know, we created energy from it. We burnt it again. Yeah. Every time we burn it, we create particulate pollution and release dioxins and chemicals into the air. And what we found is that when we look at the entire chain of plastic production, which is really the petrochemical Mm -hmm. production line, from production through manufacturing, use, end of life, you know, waste management, management of the material. It disproportionately impacts low-income communities, black and brown communities, indigenous communities across the United States and certainly here in L.A., yeah. from Baldwin Hills to Wilmington to Long Beach. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it's very prevalent. And, I mean, we can talk to it. Amelia yeah. can talk well, to it. I mean, that's why we have flipped the script on plastics, because we know that entertainment is how you can get these messages across to the masses. If you're saying, in, if you just have characters in a TV show who are making it clear that, oh, plastic can't be recycled, or saying that plastic is fossil fuels just in their character, it it gets into people's minds a lot more than if you're just seeing it in news articles. It's easier to tune that out. But if your favorite character is saying it, if your favorite character is just choosing a reusable, yeah. it, it really does trickle down. Like uh, one of our favorite examples right now is the show Shrinking on Apple TV. Yeah. Jessica Williams' character has this giant water bottle that she's carrying around with her everywhere. And it's like her sidekick. And she has a mini one that she gives to Harrison Ford. And there's a whole plot line with almost no words about her giving that bottle and so they're telling a story with a reusable bottle sure. there's so much more you can say than if she gave him a plastic bottle of water there's no story to that it's just she handed him some water yeah. but she gave him a reusable a thing he can use all the time and then it also shows their relationship so and made a it lot, a focal point yeah there's a lot more depth to it it helps the story but it also pushes forward this like oh you know maybe there's more to having a bottle that carries my identity with me like I have my bottle my stickers you know it shows part of who I am and that's a really easy way and that's a great thing you can integrate into a TV show without having to put a lot of work into your script or rework a lot of stuff now y'all have been working with SAG directly Mm -hmm. with SAG-AFTRA and their Green Council can you tell us a little bit about the work you've been doing and how that's affecting production yeah so Fran has been a supporter of Plastic Pollution Coalition since I think our second year. Shout out to Fran Drescher. Yeah, we love Fran. So we she, love you, Fran. Well, I'll interject there yeah. just that, you know, Fran is a cancer survivor and yeah. she wrote an incredible book called Cancer Schmancer and founded her own nonprofit called Cancer Schmancer that produces 
health conferences every year to really help guide people to a more healthy lifestyle. And, and she's really focused on prevention. And I very much come from a place of prevention as well. Mm. So Fran's been a tremendous ally. She's one of our notable coalition members. And then in becoming president of SAG-AFTRA, she was already in tune with a lot of work we'd been doing that we can talk to with uh, the Norman Lear Center at USC, and now Hollywood Health and Society at USC. And, um, and so she's always been right there and very aligned in terms of what's going on from the health perspective with this issue. Um, yeah. And that, that is how we got involved initially. And then when she decided to create the Green Council as president of SAG-AFTRA, she contacted us immediately and said, I'd really like you guys on board with this. And, um, you know, can you be part of helping craft yeah. the messaging? I want to take on single-use plastic bottles first. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I feel like it's it's not that hard to implement that. I remember I, I worked with a group called Postmodern Jukebox, and mm-hmm. um, one of our uh, road techs, she was also the front of house for a band called Wilco, yeah. and she instituted a policy that we then adopt. I remember that we adopted when she was the tour man, the assistant tour manager. I don't know if they still do it, so you know, <laughs> shout out to y'all if y'all still do. But <laughs> well, when when Ashley was there, and shout out to Ashley because um, I still believe that she's with Wilco, uh, she decided with Wilco that they wouldn't have any plastics whatsoever. So she gave them all water bottles and then she'd call ahead on their mm-hmm. rider and made sure that they didn't have any. So if they had plastic bottles, they would get the five gallon kind that were refillable and reusable. And she wouldn't allow any plastic on the bus whatsoever. On the, um, She wouldn't allow um, plastic utensils. Yep. Um, so she made them uh, have metal uh and uh, rewashable and reusable utensils and water bottles. And they've been doing that for, I want to say, almost a decade. (laughs) So I feel like instituting policies in this way where you have a refillable, reusable option, but it's a policy seems like it's the move. You know what I mean? Exactly. It is. It just needs to be the norm. We've talked to some people who work in productions in Canada, and they say when they go on, it's just assumed if you didn't bring your bottle, you don't get water because you didn't bring a thing to put your water in. Uh, the there's, fucking Canadians, you know, man. They get, yeah. they got it all right. And it, we need it to be that way where there's just refill stations in every studio. There are refill tanks brought when they're filming on location. And a lot of this came out of, um, before I came on, Plastic Pollution Coalition was working with musicians before we launched Flip the Script. Um, a lot of musicians have taken this on of having bottles with them, of making sure they're calling the venues ahead of time. And so the entertainment industry can do the same thing. There's mm-hmm. no reason to have the plastic there. And ultimately, it saves them money, too, because they have huge water budgets just to go out and keep buying pallets and pallets of water. That get half drunk. I know on tour, I know you can speak to this as well. You'll go. It used to infuriate me. I'd go. I'd get up in the morning and I'd see 17 half drunk water bottles. Yeah. And I would marry them and (laughs) um, make them hand washing stations because I was like, well, no, y'all going to use these. Yeah. Because that's the best I could do. But I was like, you know, look at Ashley's um, push, I said, you know, oh, that's something that musicians could adopt. And maybe if musicians could adopt that en masse, yeah. it could, mm-hmm. I, I feel like adopting policies that then roll over is going to be the, because it, it, to me, this is akin to smoking. Yep. Remember when you could smoke in a bar? That's what Fran says a long, long time. time ago. You and still I can remember. in Tennessee. <laughs> Well, we Tennessee. Play, yeah. <laughs> well, Tennessee. Well, Tennessee. Tennessee also got dry counties. That's like Tennessee right. is Tennessee. Tennessee yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah, we push that. She's going to do Tennessee. <laughs> yeah. Tennessee going to be Tennessee all day. Yeah. 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 I, no, I was just going to add, Yeah, as Amelia was saying, prior to creating Flip the Script on Plastics, um, we had a program for a long time, which has kind of evolved into a larger collective project that was called Refill Revolution. Mm. And the idea behind Refill Revolution started out when we were contacted by and started working with Bonnaroo Music Festival. Mm. So we started working with them back, I think I went and took a look at everything in 2013. Nice. We implemented the program in 2014. They did, uh, they paid for it. They had produced a certain amount of single-walled steel cups that were kind of a green chartreuse color that said Refill Revolution on them in Bonnaroo and made them available at point of sale for beer the year of 2013. They only produced 1,500. Oh, my God. Their 
eighty thousand people came right. that year. <laughs> yeah, they sold out in a day and a half. Yeah, people were stealing them from each other, and they incentivized the use of it by giving you a dollar off on every beer for a four day music festival. So if you had one of these cups, every beer was a dollar oh. off. So the next year we expanded the pilot. So we. We scaled it up a little bit, and the next year, up, 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 until right as we went into COVID, unfortunately, mm. you know, they, they ordered 180,000 steel cups. Yay. Which is incredible. Yeah. And it was a really fun project to do, but even more fun than that was to have a representation there and to have the opportunity to talk to bands and their management about how they could implement things on the road. Mm -hmm. So. That whole program's mentioned on our website. It also grew into something a little bit bigger, and we were asked by Jack Johnson and his wife Kim to be part of something we all co-created called BYO Bottle, mm. which is a site. Uh, that site does recommend reusable plastic cups, which I don't recommend. We don't recommend. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, as one of the options. But I do recommend the steel cups, and those people love and collect and brought back every year to Bonnaroo and they honored them. And it's just, they're collectibles. We did different cups every year. We yeah. did a couple purple ones. We did purple the year that Prince passed. Mm. Um, you know, it was just an amazing thing and it had a little strap and a mm -hmm. carabiner so you could, when you didn't have a beverage in it, unless you were really drunk and you tried with <laughs> a beverage in it, you could hook it onto like your jeans or your shorts That's or your so bag. Smart. Yeah. yeah, it was really, really well, cool. Well, we've taken those cups. We were actually just on the picket lines with SAG on Friday and Shout we had uh, the same carabiner straps made to say WGA, SAG Strong, and we were passing out the stainless steel cups with the straps because on the picket lines, you got, your hands are holding the signs your hands are so full so nobody has hands to carry their water mm. and so we wanted to give them an easy way to have a hands-free cup that you can just stop by the refill station get a drink and then keep yep. marching and we ran out of cups in the first hour but we and also, then we're just yeah. giving them the straps and yeah. we also brought these big a big steel container with you know a little spigot on it and filled it up with filtered water and put ice in it so it was yeah. like icy cold and that container also has stickers on it hey, <laughs> hey, hey. now uh, what is your biggest challenge because when when I look at because this is how I found out about you guys was actually at a at a fundraising dinner with uh, with SAG after and, and the sheer statistics that were shot at me w about the health about cancer about how much plastic is still out there and then about just in the oceans and in our bloodstreams and in newborn babies hearts and the sheer sort of uh, I mean force of all these this data came down on me at once and you I you have to be looking at this problem like even for us we're, we're I'm out and I'm looking around the bus and I'm like okay we can kind of try and start here but it, it requires you know like you say you got to call ahead and get the, the make sure that they're doing away with the, the plastic what is if if you're looking at this big giant problem sometimes the problem can be so there's so many different spaces and you're like what is your biggest challenge that you guys face and where is the area where you find the biggest bang for your buck with with regards to the problem because it's all over right we could talk about the ocean side we can talk about the reusable bottle side we can talk about tupperware rick that's a lot of questions oh no what is your biggest challenge <laughs> no, what's, no. what's the biggest it. challenge yeah. well hold on first of all i just want to address touring again for you guys yeah on the road you can look at this byo bottle site and you can look at our refill revolution stuff and see examples where we have suggestions we literally have sample writers from different musicians who are part of this Fantastic. movement we have um encourage you to obviously have your production let people know ahead of time with a letter this is what we're committed we're committed to a plastic free single use plastic free backstage our preferences would be these things you know real cutlery real plates mm. etc so you can ask for all of those things you can also do it personally on the bus and make a real effort to have your bus be plastic free we had folks on a couple tours that I've been involved with for Jackson Brown, Ben Harper, Bonnie Raitt, do things where they actually figured out they carried like literally a bag of tricks so we could filter water anywhere that the mm -hmm. tours went and brought big uh, five gallon glass bottles that could be refilled. And then part of the load was we loaded in those kind of coolers that have a bottle on them or inside of them where you could get hot or cold or room temperature water. Now, did you so just, just say a, you have a portable filter gimmick? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, they yeah. just know they carried a bag with different things so that they could hook the hose for the filter Copy onto. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And so yeah. the info for this week, they, we can, you can find, find it them. at BYOBottle.org or you can find it at PlasticPollutionCoalition.org and yeah. that would also be under Refill Revolution so mm-hmm. or events. And it really is. Put it um, on the rider. I like yeah, that. Yeah, no, just yeah. like you ask for it yeah. nicely Yeah. and you explain to people. Although oftentimes what I need to do is say, walk into a coffee shop with my own cup yeah. and say, hi, I, you know, I'd like to get a tea or a coffee and is it possible to get it in my own cup? And make sure your cup's clean. If <laughs> you can. Um, and then usually if they say no to me, I'll say, really, I'd really prefer it if you could because I'm allergic to plastic. <laughs> so anyway, that's yeah. just a technique. No. But you ask like, what's the biggest We're, hurdle to overcome? Do you mean specifically for all the work that we do or just in this initiative of flip the script on plastics because I, I, yeah. well first of all I, I think you're absolutely right the sort of long term getting it into the zeitgeist it's the same way where you used to see cigarettes in, in movies and mm-hmm. everything and you don't anymore and and now it's kind of you know that's that's a long term kind of solution but I'm, I guess what I'm asking what's your biggest challenge that you guys face with respect to, to this because you to, to that me that, even the great pacific patch is like but is I like think that that is part blowing. of their hurdle I feel like if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like the thing that's of eminence is getting people to understand the severity yeah. of it. Because yeah. when people yeah. understood the severity that, you know, smoking causes lung cancer, et cetera, people were okay with legislative changes. Right now it seems like people aren't okay with widespread, you know, mm-hmm. they're okay here and there in pockets and pockets, but I feel like it's really ringing the alarm more loudly. So how do we ring the alarm more loudly? I mean, I think it has to do with continued clear communication mm-hmm. and 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 the and science mm-hmm. and the science is showing us a particularly research that's come out in the last 2 years that we're finding plastic and microplastics and microfibers in uh, human blood in our in human hearts in human lung tissue in placenta both on the mother's side and the baby side and these aren't just anecdotal this is there's a large concentration yeah. of this right in the human uh, yes. plant yeah. writ, yes. writ large yeah. yes and also babies there was a study done by EWG babies are born pre-polluted in the United States with over 3,000 chemicals in their bloodstream including chemicals from plastics but I think the most important thing to understand is what do those do to us mm. and the, the chemicals chemicals that have been studied the most, although there's a lot of information coming out right now about PFAS and PFOA chemicals, which are called forever chemicals, and they're used in Teflon and water-resistant mm-hmm. you know, outdoor clothing and a lot of stuff like that. Those chemicals are forever chemicals. They actually, your body doesn't discharge those. Wow. Yeah. And they've been linked to a number of different health issues, pretty severe health issues. Um, and the factories where DuPont made those chemicals or 3M made those chemicals uh, to babies being born with very severe deformed health health mm. issues. So um, so there's that. But then there's also phthalates and bisphenols. And, you know, right at the beginning, you heard like maybe 10, 12 years ago, this is okay because it's BPA free mm. about plastic. Yeah. You see or, that all the time. Yeah, you see yeah. it all the time. But all they did was switch to another bisphenol, BPB or BPS or BPZ. Mm-hmm. And we've met with the endocrine disruption department at the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta. And the head of it, Dr. Califat, has said that the chemicals... The other bisphenols that replace BPA are equally bad, if not worse, to BPA. And what BPA has probably been studied the most, but so have phthalates. Just back up for a second. (laughs) BPA is used to make plastic rigid, transparent, and translucent. Mm. And phthalates are added to make it supple and malleable. So when like, you see a rubber ducky that a kid's playing with or people are playing with, and it's not made out of rubber, real rubber from a rubber tree, it is made from heavily phthalated, probably petroleum-based mm-hmm. plastics. Okay? Yeah. Mm. And the problem with those two groups of chemicals is they have been identified as endocrine disruptors. What does that mean? That means they impact our endocrine system in our body, which gauges how everything works. You know, how we how we grow, how we go through puberty, how we go through all the different life changes that Mm -hmm. humans experience. Um, And so those chemicals have been linked to fertility issues, uh, lower sexual function, sterility and infertility. They've been linked to breast cancer, brain cancer and prostate cancer. And they've been linked to diabetes and obesity both of which we're having epidemics of. And when I think back just in my own life and look at photographs of pretty much the public just in general from the 60s or 70s, we all carry more weight yeah. on our bodies Yeah, we're than turning we into to. Wally. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, and, We're turning and, into wallet. And that, and that has a relationship to our exposure to not only the chemicals in plastic, but other chemicals that are hormone disruptors. So the thing is, it's not even, this is interesting to me, it's not even a partisan issue. Mm. I mean, we've seen... Doc- it was never a partisan issue. No, That's no. what makes me so infuriated sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that there is, there may be a partisan issue when it comes to protecting the petrochemical industry. Facts. Mm-hmm. But the fact that this is all made from byproducts of processing petroleum and chemicals that come from petroleum or are added to it, and it's bad for our health our family's health. If anyone is listening to this and they have someone in their family or they are grappling with or dealing with cancer or they're dealing with diabetes yeah. or obesity, you've got to do your best to limit your exposure to plastic or food and beverages packaged in plastic or health products or beauty care products because you're dosing yourself with something that's going to feed your illness. Mm. And so I think that's that's the most important thing to recognize. To me, the, the, the health the health issue part of this is the key. Yeah. yeah, It is literally the key. And once you know that, yes, it's still a huge challenge every day yeah. Yeah. to figure out how you reduce your own personal plastic footprint. But it's wonderful to be able to help support policy and legislation that brings that about for everybody and gives people other choices. Mm-hmm. Is there good news? Uh, you guys would know on the ground. Is there good news <laughs> about the the Great Pacific Patch and and you know the the problem? Because I, I, when they pull fish out of the water, I, we were talking off camera. The, the, when they pull anything out of the ocean, it's the majority of it that they find is plastics mm-hmm. that are in all of the marine life, all of the everything. Thing. Is there is there good news on the on that front? You know, I, I would say no. The Great <laughs> Pacific Garbage Patch. There's no good news because companies and corporations are continuing to try and break ground to create more frac and crack gas. Yep. I mean, they rebooted the uh, the entire the Ohio the River yeah. Valley. Yeah. yeah, for that you had already everyone had already been poisoned by steel there. Yeah. Now it's being rebooted to frack and crack gas to make single-use flimsy plastic water bottles that we don't even need Mm -hmm. or plastic bottles. It's a joke. And it's going to poison everybody again. And the same thing with Louisiana and the whole corridor that's known as Cancer Alley. And the same thing that we're seeing in Houston on the Gulf Coast with 68 miles of petrochemical and plastic facilities. It's insane. Yeah, It's literally insane. So I think, you know, as we're trying to move away from our dependence on fossil fuels, People need to realize that plastics are fossil mm-hmm. fuels. Yeah, I, that's a that's the easiest message to kind of keep right there because yeah. I have any you know I don't even process it like that until we till we started talking and that's just so helpful when you think about it like that because I, I did see a vice piece where there was these these kids at a, at a, at a I think it was the, they were Dutch or something but they had made. Uh, basically, kind of this super yeah, the ocean cleanup. Yeah, yeah. is that bull? Is that BS? Yeah, or is uh, it... no, and and it just doesn't it doesn't address the actual issue because if you're cleaning up the beach, it's like cleaning up you know something that's constantly Gonna spilling. Get messed you're, you're you're cleaning a, up a band aid on end. the dam on the yeah. dam that's breaking. We need people. We need the production to stop because yes. that's what's polluting the ocean. So if you're focusing on beach cleanups, if you're focusing on cleaning up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, you're not addressing the real problem. You're just picking up litter that's going to just keep coming and keep coming you need to stop it at the source yeah. but it's also I mean it all it all sounds really scary there's a lot going on but what we try and just tell people <laughs> is just try and make one little change like if you can make one plastic free change a month that's significant because it's it's a huge problem you can't take it all on at once and I think a lot of people get stopped by that they hear all these facts and it's so big and it's so scary that it's like well what can i do but making one small change switching to my favorite thing at the grocery stores is i have little mesh produce bags and i use those instead of the Uh, flimsy crappy little plastic bags that they have there uh, and that's just a tiny change but you save there's so Mm -hmm. much less plastic you're putting in the trash by doing that every single time and i just use the same bags i never have to buy them again Mm -hmm. And just do one of those every month and it will build up and people will see it. People at the grocery store see my bags and they're like, oh, those are really cool. Where did you get those? I want that. I hate trying to find the opening on that stupid little bag. And it it trickles down. So you just, you know, you can make small changes and it will will affect. Because if we're buying less things with plastic, then industry will see that and they'll have to make less of it. And also, like, I feel like, I, you know, sometimes I feel like a small cog. 
mm. in the wheel. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. when you were saying go to a tour manifest and say changes, I was like, I'm a backup singer. I don't know when I'd be able to do that. But I feel like you're right. It's kind of your personal habits. Mm-hmm. And maybe you can influence people that way. Yeah. And that's what we want to do in entertainment is you're showing one character who has those personal habits but if you idolize that character if that's your favorite person on TV then you're going to want to start doing it if Kim Kardashian had a blinged out stainless steel bottle yeah. everybody would want to buy it that's what's up you know yeah. so you you just need one big person to do yeah. it and that's why Fran's doing that's this true. with yeah. the Green Council she yeah. has Kate Blanchett and Meryl Streep and Robert Redford on her side who never all say so. never, never heard of I know they're not no, they're not that big yeah. but they all all, they all want the plastics out of their films. There's no reason anyone on camera should ever be holding a plastic bottle. Agreed, agreed. Now, I got a curveball for you. How about uh, dog poop bags? We have people in our coalition who make plastic-free uh, dog poop bags. Get out. that I've never Get known. Get out. The one, thing that I, I, the one thing that I've used that is kind of like that, it's called the Shapoopy. <laughs> and it and it was made by Tony Shaloub's I think brother, <laughs> and it's a thing that like basically you put it on top of the poop and it scoops it up and mm. then you can like throw it out into a that's cool. Ah. It's called the Shapoopy. Hey. can we get a link? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, do they still make? I, I want to make, make them. They should join our coalition. yeah because yeah. it's called the Shapoopy. <laughs> yeah, and big Shup- up to Shapoopy. Shup- 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 exactly. Shup- Shup- so do you have these? Pa- you have a, a link to these paper uh, bags? Pooch you paper, speak of pooch paper okay. is part of our coalition um, yeah can I just interject that is literally one of the number one questions we get asked hey. the most is how do I pick up yeah, yeah now yeah because I just use the ones that say like they're biodegradable or whatever and I'm like are you really right, yeah it's all right. greenwashing like M&M's just put out some bags that they said are all compostable but if you look at the fine print it says Facilities may not be available in your area and only in commercial composting facilities. So it can say it's compostable, but you have to find the specific place to take it for it to even compost. You can't just put it in your yard. We should also um, say, because we've been telling people about greenwashing, so we Mm -hmm. should kind of break that down again. So uh, just for our listeners out there, greenwashing is when they tell you something is good for the environment, but if you really read the fine print, it Mm. ain't really. And we're seeing that in fast fashion. We're seeing that and, and you know fast fashion does a lot of plastic turnover oh, so yeah. um, especially like all the faux leather stuff they oh, make yeah. that's oh. all just fossil fuel on your body um, but I just wanted to make that clear to our audience when we do say greenwashing because I um, I did see a, uh, a comment mm-hmm. where somebody was like what does that mean yeah, yeah. and we really should be uh, clear about these terms specifically because I do believe wholeheartedly that by changing people's minds and sounding that alarm like no this is poisoning you on a regular Mm -hmm. is the way that we can get people to say hey yeah, I don't want this. We do have a greenwashing guide on our website. That's that great. We created. Yeah. So, like, I was also just going to add that we, for the last, uh, uh, particularly thanks thanks to the pandemic, we shifted our in person coalition meetings and presentations to virtual, mm. and awesome. they became a webinar series that we produce. And we've got about two and a half years of webinars, mm-hmm. including one from about a year and a half ago of Dr. Shauna Swan and Pete Myers talking about her book Countdown: The Decline in Fertility. Mm-hmm. So. If People want to learn more about mm-hmm. any of these issues. Yeah. We've interviewed a bunch of experts. We've had Fran on. We've had a few for Flip the Script. Fran was on one of them. We just did one uh, with Ellen Crawford and the Environmental Media Association talking about our efforts in Hollywood as well. Yeah, we do those once a, once a month, and you can view them all on Should our Should we website. say more about Flip the Script? I don't feel like we have told sure. you guys. Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. Yeah. Amelia. I mean, we're just we're working with anyone we can in entertainment to – eliminate single-use plastics both from set, screen, and then get it into the storylines. Mm-hmm. We, we want to hit it from all sides. If you're just eliminating it from the screen but your crew's still carrying plastic bottles, it's not really affecting a change. And where does all that waste go is what I always wonder. Yeah. Even if you're doing it, they never show the... It's very rare that you even see somebody recycling their plastics yeah. or whatever we in call a film. It, we call it magically disappearing trash. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we launched the initiative with a study that uh, USC's Norman Lear Center did where they looked at about 32 different shows from the 2019-2020 season to see how much single-use plastic was on screen and how people behaved with it. And they found 23 single-use uh, – it's actually 28 single-use plastic items per episode – 
there was not a single episode they looked at that didn't have single use plastics and they all also have what we call a mass plastic event so mm. that's a scene like a party scene filled with red solo cups mm. a grocery store where there's so much plastic you can't even count it yeah. so we really want to change that because it's so normal to people people see red solo cups everywhere and they don't think of it as plastic but if you had just one person yeah. with these like these are really cool this looks like a red solo cup you can but play beer pong steel. with that exactly and yeah. think of how cool a frat could look if a frat on a TV show had all these like branded stainless yeah. steel cups. I got cups. some for a party and they were all ceramic but they look like solo cups. Yeah, yeah. they make the ceramic yeah. ones yeah. too. Yeah, and they were like, tw- I got 20 of them. Yeah. This, one, this, say, yeah. this one's Pirani and they do them in different yeah. colors so that's cute. We have white like ones one. too. But yeah. I say all the time, just think about those party scenes is the production has to buy thousands of cups just for one five minute yep. party scene because anytime someone uses it they, they have gotta, to replace them yeah. if you buy just 500 of these for a studio you can use it in 500 different movies rewash them and then also the storyline looks better it's this frat that's caring about the environment and no frats never have positive <laughs> spins on them so let's you know show that oh maybe they even care. if you made it like a running joke like you know the frat did this because all their girlfriends were like no exactly. you have to have blah 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 there's way to make this you can make it funny yes you can make it a part of the storyline you can make it interesting so I you know I do think that it's wonderful that you're working with the Hollywood spin on it because you're right it is like cigarettes I remember you know there was a time where you could smoke all the time and that's what you saw and it really did take the banning of that Mm -hmm. yeah you know, in so it may be, it, it and may in, be the same the where, you yeah. know, to change it over, you're going to just have to say we can't have single use plastics in and it film can, and TV. It anymore. can push the sponsors, too, because if a production saying no plastics on screen, but Coke is sponsoring them, then Coke has to give them glass bottles and they just have to do that. And then people are going to want more glass bottle Cokes. And it Plus all glass bottle Coke down. is better. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, the only so Coke I drink better. is in a glass exactly. bottle. Oh, yeah. Keep it a book. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> and why does it taste better? Because it's in glass. Also, because it's made of sugar. That part. That part. But. We had uh, like there's a uh, <laughs> meal service uh, that, but I was using, and everything was great. It was all paper. Uh, the, the the casing that it came in was all paper. And then somewhere, once they had, they reached like a critical volume. They switched to it's a plastic base with a, mm-hmm. you know, with a kind of a plastic top. I, two questions: How bad is it? When the food is sitting in there, obviously, I've heard, don't microwave it in anything like that. Take it out. But just the transport of it, I would imagine... Is it black plastic? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the the concern about the black plastic, too, is sometimes it's made with some recycled content that can come from electronics. Oh, wow. Um, I would highly recommend... I mean, even the paper products, they were delivering it to you in before. Yeah. Had a certain... Probably had a per- certain percentage of plastic in them so that they wouldn't leak. Okay. Or they had the forever chemicals in them to make them, um, again, not leak to create a barrier. Yeah. So, you know... Pen Ultimate, if you have a relationship with a company that's delivering food to you or yeah. you pick it up regularly, I go in with my own containers and uh-huh. I order ahead of time and ask them if it would be okay to put stuff in my own containers. So I'm um, not as good of a son by taking <laughs> my dad's food out of there and putting it on a plate. I thought I was just the Yeah, I you are, I was the you son are a good the... son if you're going to reheat it. You okay. should always take it out of there. Yeah, okay. Never put plastic in the microwave. Never microwave anything yeah. or also, put it in you know, the too, I've been looking at uh, um, like for example a friend of mine uh, she doesn't do it on a mass commercial scale obviously but she does a food delivery service for because uh, she's an event planner and she also mm-hmm. does like a Pilates program and she does like this meal based thing for you but she charges you a one time fee mm. um, for, the for your containers mm-hmm. and they're all glass hey. that's awesome uh, yeah. and then every time um, she delivers that's it's great. all in these glass containers and then when um, she has the bags picked up you just leave your containers in the bag yeah I mean that's what people need to do and then it's just if you don't return them there's an extra fee because mm-hmm. you kept these nice mm-hmm. containers. And she should join our coalition. Yeah, yeah she's yeah. great. I'll yeah. give you her information. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. glass is so great because then you can stick it in the oven or the microwave. You can reheat it anyway. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, she just found, um, she just orders them by the case. She yeah, found yeah. a wholesale manufacturer and they're great because they look like little bento boxes, oh, that's but so they're cute. just made with glass yeah. and they have um, a top, but the top isn't plastic. It's like silicone mm-hmm. So and it fastens. So yeah. yeah, you just buy and then she does the same thing for her juices and her 
her little wellness shots, but they're all hey. in glass, oh. and you have to pay. Well, we're in love with her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. But I think it's, be, you know, I think that she's got on that train because she was a cancer survivor. Mm-hmm. So I really do think that a lot of people have made these pushes once their health has been impacted. So it's trying to get people to disrupt their consciousness before yeah. a health problem exactly. happens. Yeah. And thank you, ladies, for coming on down and for talking about this. And, and again, rocking, our, you know, all, I, I need my world rocked like that because it was just so overwhelming on this on this summer tour. I, I felt sort of powerless. And I, already I feel like, okay, yeah, I, I've got a couple of ways that I can start putting this into daily active use because it's you've got to start somewhere. But for to reiterate for our listeners, uh, how can you know to go? Let's go through the ways on how they can help and just really make it crystal clear on how they can help and get involved. Yeah, I mean, visit our website plasticpollutioncoalition.org. We have fast facts on plastic pollution. We have so many tip sheets, a lot of information for you. Flip the script on plastics has a page there. If you're in the entertainment industry, we encourage people to sign our flip the script on plastics pledge. You can donate to just help us do this work because we are a nonprofit, so we need money to be able to go out and advocate for this, sure. watch our webinars, sign up for our newsletter. We're just trying to provide these resources to as many people as we can and help make it easier for you to make the change. And we here are dedicated to that as well. So one of the things that you suggested that I love and want to reiterate to all of our listeners and watchers is to just do one thing a month, Mm -hmm. implement one change, because you're right, this is a slow and gradual process. And I feel like I do the best when I have a buddy that holds me accountable. me too. So I think that it's a great thing to find a person who wants to take that pledge with you. Um, What else can we give people to make them want to sound the alarm more about this issue once they become passionate about it where can they go i mean i would say continue go to our website as amelia said so it's plastic pollution coalition.org uh tune into stuff follow us on social media we're at plastic pollutes on instagram or plastic pollution coalition on facebook um i believe we're still on twitter or x whatever x. it is what is uh, the x thing yeah. i don't know anyway yeah, i think we're still there it's looking yeah, a little cute. authoritarian to yeah, me. yeah a little, yeah. little white nationalist but yeah. let's, let's hope not <laughs> but uh but uh no no i was just gonna say you know tune in i would say tune in and Educate yourself and then look for the things that are low-hanging fruit that you feel comfortable doing or implementing. And once you start, even if you're like a lone person doing it on a tour bus, out on the road, yeah. backstage, it leads to conversations it with does. other people. Yeah. It does. Yeah. And yeah. I've seen a lot of cool things. I've seen people buy steel bottles for everybody else on the tour with them as a gift. Hey. to others and put people's names on them. I just did that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, there you go. Hey. Yeah. yeah. I'm like blowing the surprise. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we, we also have a really fun, I'm just going to give you like, it's a, it's a window into something that hasn't been announced yet, but oh. next week we're announcing a, a collaborative horror, uh, film competition for a one to three Calling minute it plastic kills with an exclamation Ew. point. Uh, we are going to announce it with Hollywood Health and Society from USC and Plastic Pollution Coalition, and I hope that if folks hear this, they'll participate yep. and uh, you can win two thousand dollars if That's you're awesome. film right. winner. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Well, get your film on, get y'all. your film on, <laughs> yeah. Diana, Amelia. Yeah. Thank you so much for for being here, thank and uh, please keep us abreast of everything you guys have going on. And I'm sure we will uh, do the same on our end too. Thank and you thank guys you again. for keeping us positive about this journey, sh- highlighting the positive things that you can do. I think that's so important. As my bottle says, optimist. You I love that. You have hey. to stay an optimist about it all. Because I right. am not an optimist. I need optimism. <laughs> France. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So before we go today, as promised, we are going to deliver a new segment to you called Tour Stories. <laughs> Now, there are so many, so many. I've been keeping a journal for the better part of 40 years as a uh, sort of, uh, as a musician and a touring musician and stuff. And so one day I'm going to compile it into a book and it's going to be fucking amazing because. I cannot wait. Yeah, because the, the people aren't going to believe the shit that's, that's happened to us. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. I w- there was a period of time where Mr. Ty Taylor and I were trying to give, uh, trying to give Tommy Lee and Nikki Six a run for their money. So. <laughs> 
you know. So if you haven't read that book, please do. Oh that my god, it's amazing. Hands down, the greatest. The greatest rock and roll sort of, first of all, I don't, I don't care what you think about their music. Uh, I go, I, people that know me, I say this all the time. Molly Crew, hardest party and band of all time. Fuck The Who, fuck Led Zeppelin, fuck Guns N' Roses, Molly Crew, hardest party and band of all time. But the best book uh, was, uh, in my opinion, well, there was Dirt, which is amazing. There was a movie made out of it. And, um, and then shout out to Doc McGee, our manager, who was just pivotal in the, in, uh, in not only in that movie, the, somebody that played him in that movie, but also just in the life of sort of that that time in the rock and roll game. But then there was a follow up to it called the Heroin Diaries, and that is that needs to be a movie. That needs to be a movie, like hands ASAP. down, exactly. The, that's my favorite rock and roll. I've read them all. That autobiography, it's incredible. If you don't know, check it out, Heroin Diaries. It, he thought he lost his journal, and then he finally found it, like 15 years later in a storage unit. I'm talking about Nikki Six, And he released it as is, but then he gave everybody the sort of the did wrong to during that whole period. He gave them a chance to comment, and, and, it, and it's amazing. But, um, yeah, so for tour stories, I, I am I, we were trying to give them a run for their money. Coming up way short, way short. I'll just put that out there. But uh, I'll, I'll lead off today. My tour, and, and I have of hundreds, so this is going to be a great segment. But the tour story from this summer was uh, actually I, I take that back. It was from last summer, and we were doing a European run through through last summer, and it was horrific. There was all these flights that got canceled and everything, and so luggage wound up getting lost. And we would show up to airports. We show up to the Switzerland airport, and there would just be stacks and stacks and stacks of luggage where you're like, how in the world can anybody find their shit, right? And I was like, oh, okay, cool. I had, Luckily, I had an air tag, and I went, and after you go, and the people were like, oh, so you got to go, sent me the whole other wing of the airport. I, by the time I got over there, it was probably, it took me about two hours to oh get over gosh. there. Yeah, I get over there. They open up this giant room. I didn't even know they made rooms this big because you open up the room, and it was the last scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> And I was like, how? I was like, oh my God, my bag. And um, luckily, I had an air tag in it. See, this See, is why you need air tags. That's right. That's right. I had an air tag in it and it got me to my bag. Because it'll be like, you are within. 117 yeah. feet it yeah. is that accurate yeah. shout out yeah. to Apple I mean you a little corrupt and whatnot, but you be coming through right right you but be, you be coming, through. You're coming through you're coming through what's your what's your tour story this week well see many of mine um, I will have to change the names because I have um, signed <laughs> hefty NDAs protect the innocent but uh, you can look at my uh, resume and you can probably put two and two with two and two four okay you can probably do it <laughs> so for this one particular artist that I'm not gonna name because I signed hefty NDAs. We were traveling uh, in the Middle East and we um, went to Istanbul and we went to the bazaar mm. and this particular artist decided to buy some of those sepulcher swords, you know, those mm. si mm -hmm. big, you know, they look like, like chop like, off your head Yeah, like sword. out of like Aladdin kind of jaws, right, right. type jaws. I don't know what those swords are called. I'm sorry. Forgive yeah. my ignorance. But and anywho, we told this person, you should put them swords in cartage. And this person decided that they didn't need to do that because they were famous. So cut to us in the airport of Istanbul. And also let me mention that our guitarist at the time was Algerian. So they went through everybody's luggage. And I promise you, when they unsheathed that sword, this entire <laughs> airport just went silent. And I was like, well, we live here now. Yeah, so then they pulled all of our bags and oh they put God. us in this room for like I don't know six hours for most of the band yeah. except for the guitar player so they detained him for almost a day yeah. right and then they had the artist that we were with they detained that person so the tour manager once we were cleared advanced us all right uh. to the next city right so we get to this next city and we hear that they've been released but this is like maybe 16 hours later and we're supposed to play oh my god so we get to the venue and we just had to play covers for 45 minutes in front of like a very Muslim audience. Like we're sitting up there being like very superstitious, like and literally waiting until the artist came up oh and we have no guitar player, by the way. So, I mean, the keyboard player was just taking hella solos. Like we're just singing, like we're scatting, like we don't know. And people,
people are like, um, we paid to hear this artist. Like, why are you right. saying PYT? Like, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. going on? And finally, the artist walked out, and then we played the last 45 minutes of the show with their songs. But literally, we were just tap dancing for our lives. And without a guitar player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. That, that is yeah. crazy. Mm-hmm. Wow. So see, there you go. Uh, we're going to be, we have so many of these uh, tour stories. Uh, 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 uh. So I've, I've already thought of another one for next week, but uh, I, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for, for coming back to the show. We're so excited about everything we have coming up on season two. And it's been a long summer, so I'm looking forward to uh, the therapy that, it, that this type of event will provide. And make sure to reach out and uh, you know leave us a comment, ask any questions, anything like that, anything you want to know about the tour, about the road. And uh, Maya, you got, got anything else to say? We're also going to be keeping you abreast about things that are happening in the strike because that affects a lot of our town. And I'm sure that people who are not affiliated with the industry want to know some of the ins and outs of why this is taking so long. There are some misconceptions about why it's taking so long. So we will keep you abreast of all of its developments. And again, if there are any topics that you think we should cover, please let us know because this is your show. Yeah. Right. We are your conduits, but we want to give you the information that you require. So we love you very much, yeah. and we'll see you soon. Slap the Power. That's right. See you next time. Slap the Power is written and produced by Rick Barrio Dill and Maya Sykes. Associate producer, Bree Corey. Audio and visual engineering and studio facilities provided by Slap Studios LA with distribution through our collective home for social progress in art, Slap the Network. If you have any ideas for a show you want to hear or see, or if you would like to be a guest artist on our show, please email us at info at slapthepower.com. <laughs>